Let me tell you, the devil does not fear six pack. I'm not kidding. But the devil will fear the one whose inner man has been strengthened. That's why the devil said, I know who Jesus is. I know who Paul is. But who are you? That means I will never mess with Jesus. I will not mess with Paul because I know who Paul really is. Yes, he's been beaten several times, left for dead at one time. He was in several shipwrecks. He went through hard times. His physical body may be weak, but I cannot touch him. I dare not touch Paul. Why? Not because of his physical strength, but because of his spirit man that was strong. Question, how strong are you spiritually? I did not say how knowledgeable you are about the Bible. I said, how strong are you in your spirit? That takes me to my topic, which is be strong. Everybody say, be strong. We've been dealing with this subject for some time, but let me take you back over there. In Ephesians chapter 6, and let me start with the foundation. It says, in Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, verse, uh, and the, part, the last part of the verse reads like this. But the people that do know their God shall be what? Come on, everybody, louder. Say it again. See, what, watch this. This is the progression. When you know God, you become strong. The result of becoming strong is you do my exploits. That should be the testimony. That is the progressive growth of a Christian. Know God and become strong. And because you're strong, you will do exploits. And God desires that every one of us be strong in Him. Say Amen. That's why in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 he says, Finally, my brethren, be what? I'd like you to preach to me. Come on. Be what? Louder. Be strong. Turn to your neighbor and say, be strong in the Lord. No, no, no. Watch this. He qualified it. He never just said be strong. That would mean six pack. He said, be strong in the Lord. Thank God for gymnasium. People spend sometimes more time in the gym than in prayer. Be careful. Who are you trying to impress? You need to have good health. I'm not against that at all. And you need to go to the gym. I'm not saying don't go to the gym. But comparatively, how much time do you spend? Some are very religious to go to the gym, but not to pray. Some are very religious to go to the club, but not pray. Am I telling you the truth? Yeah. Because we don't see the value of being strong in the Lord. He says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Now, turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3, please. And let's read from verse 1. This know also that in the last days, perilous time shall come. Stop. What times? The word perilous means hard to bear, troublesome, dangerous, days of distress. Does it ring a bell? I said, does it ring a bell? Where in these days? There is no certainty about anything. It's all working together to fulfill prophecy. The Antichrist being set up. Let me give you some understanding. I'm sure you all know about digital currency, do you? So when Bitcoin came, it was going really well. The governments were the first ones to begin to panic. Do you know why? Because that currency, that crypto cannot be controlled by governments or by banks. So now, because they can't beat it, 
every government is planning on bringing in digital currency themselves so they can still control. And you have to keep yourself abreast of what's happening because it's all pointing towards the end days. Watch this. Sometime back, there is a portion, there is a region, a province in China where there was no more cash. It was all digital. They're all trials are happening. And suddenly something happened and they froze all the banks. You can't, it's your money with them, but you can't touch it. You can't use it. You have no permission. There is no fiat currency. What would you do? Now watch this. Where am I, where, what am I, why am I sharing all this? It happened in a province in Canada recently. People are jumping to go to Canada. Watch. Watch this. If the world turns like that, and it is progressing that way, cash will be out of circulation. Everything will be digitized. Now if they say you have to have a mark of the beast. If you don't, you can't buy, you can't sell. What would you do? In the last days, perilous time shall come. I'm not speaking this to put fear in your hearts. Watch. Why? The reason I'm sharing this is very important for you to know. God does not declare things to cast fear upon us and feel helpless. When God wanted to proclaim a famine in the land, He called a prophet and He spoke through the prophet. He said, there shall be famine. When the prophet spoke and declared famine, he became subject to the famine. Is that true? right. But look at this. God spoke to him and said, I have made arrangements for you. So although we are in perilous times and if they say you can't buy or sell without the mark of the beast, don't fear because God has a way out for us. But wait, it's not going to happen automatic. It's not going to be published in newspapers. It's not going to come in radio or television. It will be a still small voice that you will hear what you have to do. And it will not be the same instruction to everybody. Are you listening? What am I trying to get at? That if you don't have a deep relationship with God and are strong in the Lord, you will not survive. You will not survive. Let's read. Continue. Verse 2, please. For men shall be, watch this, and you see, and see if this will relate to how we live today. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters. Everybody wants to boast on Facebook. I am this, I'm better than you, I'm an influencer, I have 10,000 people, I have 20,000 people following me saying likes. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Oh, 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 what? Hello? What did I, what did I just say? What? Disobedient? Gen Z has no respect for parents. And they think that's life. God has prophesied it to us. When Gen Z is saying we have no respect for parents, it's a sign that the end times we're living in. All right. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Go on. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Whoa, 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 whoa. I want to sleep half an hour longer before I come to church. I'm a bit too tired from last night's Saturday night party. I can watch on 
live stream. What is your priority? We give more importance to a party than we would give to a service, church service. All right. High-minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God continue. Having a form of godliness by denying the power thereof. From such, from such, if you want to be strong in the Lord, you got to turn away from certain things in life. You have to decide. It's a decision. It's not, oh, the devil made me do it. No, the devil has no power to make you do. It's your choice. The devil only has the power to tempt you, but does not have the power to make you do anything. Verse 6, is that, is that it? Or verse 6, what does it say? For of this sort are they which creep into houses. That's enough, okay. That's enough, all right. So, anyway, now let's go to John chapter 16, verse 33. Be what? Strong in the Lord. Everybody say, be strong in the Lord. Because the times we live in are not good. You know, when you're fired from a job or you have bad news come to you, don't be perturbed. First thing is don't panic. Stay calm. It's because once you begin to panic and once you begin to become excited in the aspect of Oh, I don't know what's going to happen. Hopelessness sets in and you cut yourself off from hearing the instructions of God for your deliverance. Calm down. How many remember it? I think two or three weeks back I said something. When something happens that you never desired for or it's a sudden bad news, the first question people ask is why? Why did this happen? I said, never ask God why. Always ask God what. It has happened. You can't change it. Now, what do I do? Never ask the question how, why, but ask the question what. Because there is always a way out in Christ Jesus. He said, I am the way. Hallelujah. He is our way out out of that circumstance but you have to be strong in the Lord John chapter 16 verse 33 says these things have I spoken unto you that you may have might have peace in the world you shall have what come on speak louder you shall have tribulation that means perilous times are coming hardships are coming challenges are coming if they have not yet come they are soon coming Okay. Now, what does the word tribulation mean? Same thing. Trouble, anguish, persecution. Trouble, anguish, persecution. And God says, you shall have tribulation. So what does he say? Be of good cheer. Why? Even in the midst of the tribulation, you will find a way out. And the way is in Christ Jesus. But if you're not strong in the Lord, what, you know what you'll do? You'll begin to question God. You'll question His Word. You'll question His integrity. You'll question everything about God. And sometimes you'll turn away from God because you say, why does God do this to me always? Because you're weak in your spirit. You don't understand how deeply He loves you. And although He permitted this to happen, He has a way out for you. you will have tribulation. There will be difficult times and challenging times that will come. Let's get ready, church. In our own nation, the talk we hear that we don't speak loud is that it's not getting easier for Christians to preach the gospel. 
rules, policies are being promulgated to curtail our activity, to stifle us from free expression and declare that Jesus is Lord. Do you know right now we are on Shubhavartha and we have been instructed that we cannot share any testimonies on that television program. Not even my own testimony. Because they, they said it's a superstition. And people are being misled if we share any testimony. Even if you have the doctor's reports. This is what they tell us. It's not getting better. So are we going to fear? But that's what the devil wants. Let me share something with you that I just read the other day. This is what I want us to pray as a church, okay, for our nation and for the church. Go with me. I didn't plan this, but let's go to Psalm 3, please. The book of Psalms chapter 3, and it's, uh... all right. Lord, how are they increased that trouble us, not me, the church? Many are they that rise up against us. Go on. May there may many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. What they're saying is they don't have any help in God. They think that we do not have a defense. We're weaklings. We come from the lowest economic strata. Generally speaking, most people come from the lowest caste. So in their mind, we are a minority. We have no backing. We have no power, we have no economic power, no financial strength, no political power. So they think we're weak. Many there be which say of my soul or which the soul of the church, there is no help for them in God. Go ahead. But thou, O Lord, hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Thou, O Lord, are a shield for us, my glory and the lifter of mine head. In the midst of shame, God will lift our head. Go on. Go on. Go on, quick. Next verse. That's it? Yeah, I said, let's go to the next one. Is that it? No, no more verses? All right, only four verses, is it? Yeah, that's what I said. L I laid me down and slept, and I wakened for the Lord sustained me. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I think you've got a few more verses in that chapter. Yeah. I will not be afraid. Watch this. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against us round about. Replace the word me with the word us. And, re and realize that's a church, not just a person. Okay? Next verse. Arise, O Lord, save us, O my God, for Thou hast smitten all our enemies upon the cheekbone, and Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Hallelujah. Go on, go on. Salvation, glory, belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon Thy people. Glory to Jesus. Now, I am not encouraging rebellion. I'm not encouraging fist fights or street fights. What I'm encouraging is this. Let's be strong in our faith in God. That when these things happen, the wisdom of God will kick in. And we will prevail over these forces with the wisdom and the power and the strength of God. That He will back us up. He will deliver us. His salvation will show up. And He will bless the church in this nation. But let's not, watch this. Let's not talk what the world is saying. Oh, the church cannot grow. The church is this. The church is weak. The church does not have, no, let's not talk like that. Because the more you talk that, the more you establish that. No, we are more than conquerors. We are not a minority with God on our side. Many times when he wanted to deliver his people, he didn't look for a committee. He didn't look for a group of people. He said, I need one man. And he went after Moses. He said, I need one man. He said, Moses, lay hands and transfer this anointing onto Joshua. 
He said, my people are in trouble. I've heard their cry. I want to anoint somebody. And that man is Gideon. One man. When God is on our side, we're not a minority, we're a majority. Because the battle does not belong to us. The battle belongs to Him. Come on, let's not act like orphans. Let's not act like our God is dead. Let's not act like we're vimps and, you know, and uh, beaten puppies. No, we are children of God, but we are not boasters. We believe in a God that will deliver us. We believe in a God that will show us ways and means by which nobody can shut us up. Come on now, amen. Now, if you are here in a spy, please take this message across. Because I know now the, the churches are being infiltrated. I'm telling you the truth. This is what's happening in our country. The churches are being infiltrated by people that are imposters. They're saying we're Christian, but they're coming in to find out what we're preaching to use it against us. But nobody has the wisdom that God has. Church, do you now see the need to pray much? The way you beat the devil is not with intellectual wisdom. It is with spiritual wisdom. The wisdom that is above the three-dimensional world. They put him in prison. And they sent the police in the morning. The temple police. And said, bring them. We want to judge them. The police, the temple police go. And they say... There's nobody in the jail. Really? No. And they go looking for them and they're preaching the word outside. Wait, what happened? God can deliver you without breaking the jail door. When His presence shows up, the Bible says there was an iron gate after passing through several gates, there was an iron gate which was locked, which had security. But when Peter and the angel came, my Bible says the gates opened by themselves. The gates opened. Peter was not living in this age where we have remote control. But the, God has remote controls for which there is no remote control. Let us dwell on the miraculous power that God has made available for His children. How do you become strong? Not by thinking and listening to negative information and negative stories of stories of people that have been beaten people who have been who have been sick and di and died no you got to you got to be selective you have several channels hundreds of channels on your television but i know last night many of you tuned in to watch the football game you made the selection is that true you select. Don't say, I, I can't help it. No, I can help it. It's my television. The remote is in my hands. I make the selection and I choose to watch that. So you choose to read the word. You choose to read books that will build your faith. You choose to listen to the right men of God that will build your faith. Not those that will put fear, doubt, and make you question the word of faith. You make the choice. Fill yourself with the word. Fill yourself with his presence. 
pray that the reality of his indwelling presence becomes so real that you walk in the awareness of his presence with you at all times. Whether you're in your prayer room or you're in your boardroom. Say amen. amen. The Lord is on our side. It's not enough just to make the confession. You have to grow in that confession. You have to grow in the reality. You have to grow in that faith.